And hello, Americans. I'm Todd Starnes. Thanks for watching Starnes Country. Let's get started. Mike Lindell is an American success story. He is an accomplished inventor and the chief executive officer of MyPillow, a, a mighty fine pillow, I might say. Most recently, Mike has started funding faith-based movies. He has an incredible story to tell. Mike Lindell, welcome to Starnes Country. Thanks. It's an honor to be here, Todd. <laughs> so look, um, there's a lot I want to go through here because I'm just r really intrigued by, by your story. And um, I, I know a lot of folks have read about you and they love your pillow. Uh, it's an awesome, it's an awesome pillow. Um, but there's more to Mike Lindell than, than just a pillow. And that's what I want to dig into here. And, and I want you to take us back uh, and, and share with us a little bit about, about your testimony. Well, it's, uh, I guess you can go back to my childhood. My, uh, my parents divorced when I was seven, so I was the oldest child and, they, uh, and uh, put into a new school and I actually had this uh, fear of unworthiness, rejection. I would either show off or I was very introverted. I was very shy, um, which if you would have told me where I'm at now, I'm going, that ain't gonna be me. And, uh, and then I got into, uh, in the 80s, I got into cocaine. When I found cocaine in my 20s, they, uh, um, I'm going, wow, I can, you know, I can talk, I can, it was a, it was a um, false courage and a, you know, hit any inner pain and stuff or the addiction and, and I was a very functioning addict for years for, um, I married 20 years ago, I had a family and always an entrepreneur. I had, uh, in fact, I started a carpet cleaning business once because my sister flooded a, an apartment building we were living on the third floor with a water bed and I go, well, this, I'll start this business, you know, cleaning up the water. <laughs> Is that something that came naturally to you, being an entrepreneur and an inventor? Well, I think it was to solve problems, you know, to, to see, a, see a problem and, uh, and get a solution and, you know, see the need and then reverse engineer what the need was. And, but I got into a bar, um, bars, small bars, uh, hometown bars, and I ended up having one for 13 years. Not a good place for an addict, but, oh, yeah. <laughs> but it was very, um, um, you know, I, I knew what the crowd wanted to see. You came into my bar and it wouldn't be, uh, you would get, um, inter you know, you'd be like an escape entertainment rather than, you know, just a place to drink, you know, and it was, uh, and I, enjoy, I enjoyed it, but I, like I say, not a good place for an addict. And then my, my addiction, addiction switched to crack cocaine. And then that, you know, they're two different drugs, really. And they, and um, I ended up, I sold the bar at the time. I thought, well, this is just like when I was uh, let go of my first job at a grocery store. I'm going, this is devastating. I have to sell it by a series of circumstances. Had to sell this bar I had thir for 13 years. And friends of mine I grew up with and everything, you know, it was like losing a family. And I'm going, but I look back now and that had to be. And, they, uh, and during that time from there until I invented my pillow, uh, it took about a year and a half to inventing my pill, but I put all my um, energy into into doing this. It was just I, you know, woke up one or one night. I'm I'm right my pillow all over the house. My daughter came upstairs. She goes, "What are you doing, Dad?" And I go, "One of my daughters." I said, "I'm going to invent this pillow. It's going to be called my pillow. It's going to change the world." And she's and she's going, "That's really random." And she went back downstairs. <laughs> No. Take me through. Take me through that point in your life, though, because uh, here you are, very successful. You're making these products, you know, my pillow, and yet you still have this serious problem with addiction. Well, it's you know, when I once I got once I invented my pillow, I was turned down everywhere, and I was completely broke. Mortgaged our house to buy Christmas present. We had nothing. There was nothing left, and. And I just thought, wow, I finally have this pillow. I could go in, I went into a box, how many you want? I got the best pillow ever. And they're going, um, you need to leave. You know, it was, uh, so it was a complete shutout. And I ended up uh, uh, doing shows. Someone said, well, Mike, why don't you do a kiosk? I said, well, how do you spell that? I didn't you know, know what a kiosk was. And I ended up doing this kiosk and, and um, we only, I, couldn't, I couldn't sell it. The interesting thing, I couldn't sell it that kiosk because I, you know, like I say, I was not, you know, outspoken or whatever and uh, my my wife at the time she did most of the hours but the one day I was there this guy bought one of the pillows and he said you have a business card I said oh I'm all out and I wrote it on a piece of paper and gave him this yeah. phone number and and it got through to December of that year and in January there was nothing left you know we hadn't sold too many pillows and but that guy that got that number called me up and he said it was a divine appointment he says are you the guy that invented this pillow from here in Minnesota and I said yeah and he said this pillow changed my life he said uh I run the Minneapolis Home and Garden Show. Would you like a spot in there? And I go, sure. You know, I'm going, you know, I absolutely. And I and I changed the setup of the booth, put a table in front of me, 
and had all this, uh, you know, my banner guaranteed the most comfortable pillow ever, and I did the sales. And I, an interesting thing happened when I had that table there. I could talk to people without needing drugs and with all this passion, where they would come up with an agenda. And I, if I stepped out behind that booth, I couldn't do anything. I'm going, hey, I gotta go, you know. And uh, it just exploded for. And I did shows for seven years. You mentioned divine. It was a divine appointment. Mm -hmm. Now, up and up until that point in your life, did you did you go to church? Were you religious at all? You know, I would always tell people. Interesting enough, um, you know, 28 people quit their addictions as I was addicted. I would be in a whether it be after the bar or, or in, a, in a crack house or whatever. We'd be talking about. I would be talking about God, and we should quit the quit this addiction. And they they would quit that day and find Jesus. And I'm going, what did I say? What did I do? And and uh, so there was, uh, yeah, I had uh, you know Ed went to church when I was you know Bible school Bible study when I was a kid, and and uh, so I had some seeds planted. But I uh, you know and I and I knew. That there's some day. I mean, it even led up to when uh, the drug dealers did an intervention on yeah, me. Yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah. I mean, this was what 2008. 2008, right? And your drug dealers staged an intervention. Right. They did this intervention. There was three of them. It was in the, um, one of the worst parts of Minneapolis, and I came out of the room, and I'd been up for 14 days, and and uh, wow. They they go, you know, we're cutting Mike off. They knew of each other. They didn't know each other. Had never met each other. I go, what are you guys all doing together? And they go. They go, Mike's been up for 14 days, and you guys were all cutting you off. You know, they, and so I waited two of them left then, and the last one went to sleep, and I walked down the hit the streets looking for crack, and, and I couldn't get it anywhere. About an hour later, 2 o'clock in the morning, came back upstairs, and he goes, here. He took the picture, and he goes, you're going to want this for this book, because I kept telling him I was going to write a book. He said, you told us someday, you keep telling us that this pillow is just a platform for God, and you're going to come back and help us all with our addiction someday, and, and you've been prophesizing this and telling them we're not going to let you die on us. and and Because uh, I would always tell him that, you know, that, hey, you know, I'm going to come back someday, I'm going to quit, and I would... and. Uh, and that, you know, I ask him nowadays, you know, he wanted works for me, he's a born again Christian. And he, I, we, my book writer just asked him the other day, he said, how did you, did you guys believe me? He goes, yeah, we had to protect him. He said it with such passion all the time that we believed him. So the, the, the guy who used to sell you drugs now works for you. Yeah. yeah he's he's yeah. an employee and he's a, he's a believer in Christ. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All absolutely. right. So take me through that, that, that conversion experience you had. Well, if you, you know, you go through 2008 and when I, because um, from the time of that little intervention there, and I, I knew that my pillow was just a platform for a much bigger thing. And a lot of things happened in 2008, but one of the things that happened, it was December of 08. And in December, a friend of mine came to me. He had, for three years, he was my equal. And we had both started cocaine about the same time, both switched to crack at the same time. And, and he, had found, he had found Jesus for three years. He had, uh, been, you know, been clean, and I knew that I hadn't seen him in a year. And he came to me, and I go, Dick, what are you doing? And he goes, He goes, I got in prayer to come out here. What's going on? I said, Well, as long as you're here, I got some questions for you. I said, Is it boring? He goes, No, man, it ain't boring. And I had all these questions that only he could answer, you know, that because uh, he was my equal, and that's my platform. I'm going to be doing now with the Recovery Network is based on that, where you get someone that's your peer, that's your equal to to listen to him. Well. Anyway, then on uh, January 16, 2009, which was a month after my friend visited me, I knew there was nothing left. My company had been taken by uh, these guys that worked for me, and I knew instinctively one more day someone else was going to get picked for this, you know, that I was chosen for. And, and they say, was that your bottom? Well, there was nothing left, but, uh, you know, a bottom to me was I knew that this platform would never be you know, that I'd always dreamt of. And I knew with God all things are possible that it would show this huge um, miracle, so to speak. And I thought this even the day I quit, but I, my prayer was, God, I want to wake up in the morning and never have the desire for these drugs again, and then I'll do this platform thing. I kind of make it a deal yeah. with God. But, uh, you know, I quit. And that morning I woke up, I go, wow, something's different. Something's different. And it was gone. The desires were gone. Now, two months later, I actually went to my church, went to an outpatient thing there. I walked in and said to the counselor, I said, you know, I quit crack two months ago and stuff and everything, but I feel drawn here and um, that I should go here. And I went in there and I learned about, it wasn't like any other treatment centers where I learned about, they go, we don't want to care how much you did. Let's talk about your father. And I had come from this divorced family, you know, and we got into those things. But I didn't, 
I didn't surrender to Jesus there, okay? You know, I'd always wear my cross on TV. Everybody's seen me on TV when I did that first infomercial. And uh, um, by the way, when we did that first infomercial, there was just a, a, a real audience and a friend of mine, and I had never been in front of cameras before. And the night before that, the guy, uh, this one producer guy, text the other guy, said, this is the worst guy I've ever seen. We were doing our reads. He said, he's never going to make it on TV. And uh, it was partially right. I couldn't be yeah, in front of cameras. Too, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but I, you know, I, I kept on going um, where I wanted to be. I met a gal in, uh, in the summer of 2014, and she had something I didn't have, this relationship with Jesus. She had this personal relationship, and I could see it in her. I'm going, well, I, you know, I wear my cross, and I do all this, and, and I wanted that. And, um, but then, you know, things kept happening to me, miracles, starting in the summer of 15, and then in the, in the, you get into 16, when all of a sudden I get a private meeting with the president, who is now the president of the United States. I'm going, and I'm invited to the national prayer breakfast in 16, and picked by 12 people to pray with Ben Carson in a room. I mean, these things kept happening. I'm going, okay, show me more, God, show me more. And my friends are all quitting, going, this can't be. There's some, you know, here's Mike, an ex crack addict, running around in all these places. And, and it wasn't until uh, February 18, 2017, I actually went to Operation Restore Warrior. It's like a, a drop zone for veterans, and I was invited in there. It's where I uh, co did a complete surrender to Jesus, and uh, and uh, now I'm able to go out and, he, and speak about Jesus like I did for a pillow. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's life changing. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, looking back. Over, over really these past 10 years, you know, 2008, you're having an intervention with your, uh, with, <laughs> drug with your drug dealers, and now you're ministering to people, you're with the President of the United States. I mean, what does that tell you about, about, about Christianity? Well, with God, all things are possible. I mean, for me, I mean, for me, I, I mean, it's like the, what God had planned for me and what I had planned, go, there's no way. I mean, I just spoke it for 50,000 people twice at U.S. Bank Stadium and then Texas Speedway to all these millennials telling my story and speaking out for Jesus. If you'd have told me that, I would have said, no. If I'd have been able to look in the future, I would have said, are you kidding me? <laughs> I am curious about that. I mean, what is the reaction to, to millennials? You know, it's a hard group to, yeah. to, to reach. Do you know, I did that, and that was last um um, let's see, I don't know, maybe nine months ago last time, in the May of uh, 2018, and there was about 50,000 of them there, and I spoke that day, and I t told a little bit about five minutes of my testimony on, and about three weeks later, we were at an amusement park in Minnesota, me and my granddaughter and my niece and nephew, and they, I was just flooded. They, every millennial was coming out to me, you changed my life, your story changed my life. And I, that meant so much to me, God using me to bring other, to bring these millennials, to give them hope. It's hope. And they, you know, so many of them said, I surrender there. That was my thing. This was like a six hour event and mine was only like five, 10 minutes. And I'm going, you know, and I led them all in prayer. I mean, it was just for me, it was, it was very rewarding and almost surreal to me to hear this, for, you know, how God works and how, the, how that's. You know, I mean, that in, story. in reality, Mike, you you thought that the pillow was going to give you the platform, but really it was your testimony. It's what God did in your yeah, life. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that, you know, if I look that, back and it's you know, the uh, the pillow has given me. You know, I want to tell you the uh, the uh, this is kind of a, a great story here. The president he did a shout out for me at a at a rally in Fargo, North Dakota. I remember okay. that. And he did this shout out, and it was one minute long. It was epic, okay? But he was talking about, he said, this guy's a great ad bar. By the way, I have his pillow. He said, amazing businessman, whatever. Now, when he did that, it went, whoo, my level of popularity went so high. Well, here's, I, t I had a one-on-one -on -one with the president, and, and uh, I said, you know what, I got to tell you, Mr. President, this is about a couple months later. I said, I have to tell you this. I said, the next morning, a newspaper called me. I'm not going to name what it is. And they said, yeah, Mike, uh, the president did this shout out for you. It was a, you know, what a great shout out. Boy, I'll bet you sold a lot of pillows. And they're trying to make it some, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, it wasn't about the pillow. He was telling, he was saying what an amazing businessman I am and making good decisions. And I said, he raised my popularity threefold. So I'm able to go out and talk about Jesus in 
front of 50,000 millennials. And the president looked at me and goes, why did you say that? And I said, he said goodbye and hung up, never printed the story. You triggered the poor guy. <laughs> yeah, he, you suffered a microaggression. Yeah, they're going, I'm never calling that guy again. He says good things about the president. I'm not calling him. <laughs> what do you? Th I want to talk to you about your your relationship with the president. I mean, you're you're a man of God. Mm -hmm. um, the president has caught a lot of flack mm -hmm. for for his his lifestyle mm -hmm. and his choices. What's your What's your take on him? You know, let me let me tell you. I met him in a private meeting. I don't know anything about politics. Uh, you know, I was a crack addict. You know, and an ex addict. And he reached out to me in the summer of '16 before the election. I met him on August 15, 2016. I walked into his office. We talked, I went in there with hope, and we, we talked about, um, he asked me about my cross, we on TV, he says, are you a Christian? I said, yes, and this is a divine appointment, Mr. Trump, and, and we talked about what he was going to do, all these things he was going to do, the inner city, he was proud of my company, you know, mm -hmm. 1,600 employees here in the United States, everything made here, and we talked about this, and I walked out of there, and I said, there's not a person on this planet I want to be my president than, than Mr. Trump, and, they, and at that time, and then I talked to his employees, this was key. And it was like talking to mine. Every one of them said a great thing is about him, how he had individually, and, I, and I'm going, wow, is this for real? You know, his heart was to help the country, and, and it was just absolutely amazing. Instantly, the third debate, I end up then at the, I went all in. I didn't care, you can, mm. you, I went all in, even my board, you know, we advised against this. I said, you know what, my once uh, CMO, she came out, she goes, we didn't get this far by you not listening to God. I go, yeah, we didn't get this far by me not listening to God. And I said, I'm going all in, these are, this is me. And I went all in, I ended up at the third debate. And this is what they, I, one of the, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle of the spin room with uh, then uh, Governor Pence, and it was just him and I. They say, anybody want to talk to that pillow guy? So I get put in the spin room with all this media, and here I'm not going to name the station. We all know a couple of them. They stick their microphone in my face. They go, they go yeah, Mike, uh, you are your cross. What do you think about the, um, this? It was like 11 days after that sex tape thing. And I said, well, you know what? Let me tell you. I said, I was a cocaine addict and a crack addict. And I said, I have a past you wouldn't believe. And I said, I said, by the grace of God, I quit everything overnight. January 16, 2009, and I said, I have been in a, in a transformation ever since. I said, I, I had a meeting, private meeting two months ago, or a month, whatever it was back then, with uh, with Mr. Trump, and I said, he must, that's not that guy, this guy must be in some amazing transformation. And I said, he must be picked by God himself, because I said, and I said, do you know Phil Robertson read him the gospel? She took the microphone and went, never mind. It's you know, aggression. Yeah, yeah, yeah it just, you know, and I'll tell you, I've never, you know, for me, they can't, people that I see on the streets, it's all good. I, everyone that comes up to me, they, they compliment me. They're going, you know, about my transformation, my, my journey with, for Jesus, and about we're, tell the president we're praying for him. He's amazing. And every once in a while you'll get someone, Mike, I like what you're doing, but you're aligning yourself with this guy. And I'm going, then you're telling me I'm wrong. I did my due diligence. The guy, he's amazing. You mentioned employees. Um, one of the things I was really impressed with, uh, you tell a story about the foundation. You guys have a foundation. Mm -hmm. There was a guy working for you. He was walking, what, 14 miles yeah, yeah, a day yeah, to work? Yeah, yeah. So what did you do? I bought him a car. I go, this guy's late. I'm going, wow. he's been late. It changed. We look for my company. We look for deviations. And we're, I have about 500 of my 1,600 employees have my direct phone number. They'll call me for any deviations. We're like a big family. And I don't get too many calls, but when I do, it could be somebody's behavior, somebody's, you know, just today, um, we had a, a person that uh, we think, you know, he's got some addiction problems now because it changed his change. So we're getting him help. You know, we're getting him help. And uh, um, we're like this guy with this car. I bought him a car. Employee said, come up to me. They go, how come I don't get a car? Walk, walk 14 miles every day for there six months go. to work and we'll buy you a car. Makes you sense. Know? Makes we're very sense. fair. <laughs> Um, one, one more thing, and I, I wish we could have you here for another hour. Um, I, I want to ask you about faith-based movies. I'm a big fan of, of some of the great movies that are coming right. out there talking about Jesus in a very real way. Right. And you've decided to invest, and it really kind of upset a lot of people in Hollywood that yeah. you were doing this. Right. But, but tell me about why you decided to, to get involved in that venture. Well, at first, you know, I wanted to get, get learn the movie business because when my book comes out, which is going to be coming out this spring, and I wanted to make a movie from it because it's going to, and I wanted to, uh, um, you know, make good movies that have that message, have a message that are good movies instead of making, you know, they should be the best movies, you know, out there, the, the Christian movies, the Christian-based movies with, there's epic stories, you know, there's just, and, and, um, 
that's where I got involved in, and then I, you know, I got a call in this this re most recent one called uh, Unplanned. It's a true story about Abby Johnson with uh, with Planned Parenthood, and uh, you're in the movie. Yeah, you and I'm in the They called me up. They said you want to be a camera. It's an epic part of the movie, and they said they go, Mike, um, you know. Will you be in this? We and I said, okay, I'll be in it. And you know, I prayed about it. And I'm going to end up being in it. And I even invested a lot of money because it's got a great message. And mm -hmm. and when I get there, though, there's 300 extras. Secret place we're doing it, and they and the sun was going to go down. And all of a sudden, they bring in this stunt man. I said, no, you ain't doing no stunt man to ride this bulldozer. I'm dry, I'm going to drive it. Wait, wait, you're <laughs> literally on the bulldozer. Yes. of course, uh, of course. They're bringing oh, a yeah. stunt man. He didn't even have a mustache. Come on. Oh, that's <laughs> not right. That's just not right. But they let me do it, and it went off. It was perfect. Yeah. What an amazing story. Yeah. Um, Mike, thank you for coming by. you got to come back when your book comes out. Absolutely. We'd love to have you back yeah. on. Yeah, it's going to it's going to be a changer. I want to say one thing, too. My recovery network, the Lindell Recovery Network, they, what we're going to be doing, what I'm going to be doing, imagine stories of hope. You put in your, you'll put in your age and your uh, what you're addicted to, and all these stories of hope will come down. I'll tell you where to go get help, and we're going to have paid mentors helping from all over the country. That is terrific. It's going to um, be amazing. And we're going to get you back on the radio show, too. That's awesome. All right. Mike Lindell, thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thanks for having me.